Not exactly the ideal weather for your first time ever riding a skateboard, but hey, what you gonna do? Today was the only day I had off. What's up guys, welcome back to another episode of the Crowley Crew. So today we're finally doing the review of the Canon EOS M50, and first of all, no this camera is not weather sealed, it is wrapped in a plastic bag. Let's get going. somewhere that's a little bit drier that we can actually talk about. That'll work. Maybe I should have just ridden in here. Alright, so I think the first thing we need to talk about is resolution and frame rate. We have 1080p at 24, 30, and 60 frames a second, and we also have 4K at 24 frames a second. I'll go into that in a little bit, but not yet. There's also a high frame rate mode. You do have 720 at 60 frames a second, though I personally would not use it. But then there's also 120 frames a second at 720p. Now I know there's a lot of people who are like, why is that even in this camera? But if you use it in a very specific way, you can actually get decent results with the 720p. Of course, you will not have as sharp of an image as 1080p or 4K. And another thing to note about it is that the dual pixel autofocus does not work in 720p and there is no continuous autofocus. So that's another sort of crippling to this that I wish that it didn't have. But you can work with that and if you know how to manual focus, you can still get some good results. Example in this video up here. Another thing that this has is a time lapse feature. I've used this a few times, it works really well and I really like the look of these. You can do them in either 4K or full HD 1080p. You of course have full manual exposure, you have a microphone input, and you have manual audio meters. Now, one thing that I like about this camera that I've not had on any of my other Canon EOS M cameras is the ability to set my Kelvin value. Right now I'm set at 5500 Kelvin, so you don't have to just go with the presets that the camera comes with, which I've never found to be perfectly accurate for what I want. So that's definitely a benefit. Another thing you can do is install custom picture profiles. Now in general I haven't been using them, I've been using the natural picture profile and then taking the contrast down and leaving the sharpness at two, but if you want to use something like CineStyle, which I know a lot of people like and personally I have on this camera, you have the ability to do that. A cool thing that you have with this camera, and it shares it with its older brother, the M5, is the touch and drag AF. You can have your eye up to the viewfinder and still use the touch to focus on this camera, which has been really useful. So if you want to kind of keep a more stable three points of contact, you can still reach your thumb over and pick where you want to focus and do beautiful focus pulls. And of course the staple feature of this camera is the dual pixel autofocus. If this camera did not have dual pixel autofocus, 
no one would get it. This camera has a digital stabilizer in it. I personally would probably never use this. I have found with my 22 millimeter lens, with the digital IS enabled, not enhanced, it looks okay. But enhanced looks terrible no matter what lens I put on and it crops it a lot. When I put the enable on with the camera's lens IS also working, I've also had really mediocre, pretty much unusable shots. Another thing I would suggest is that because the record button is in such an awkward place, I would make the shutter release button also your movie start. That's come in really handy. Your finger naturally goes to that point. It's a really nice tactile motion for the record button. I found that it works really well. Okay, rain is getting a little hotter. I'm gonna have to move. Okay, there's no wall over here. Let's go back. All right, so I can't really find anywhere else that I think would walk good for the rest of this, so uh, I'll see you back at the studio. <sighs> All right, that's better. I'm not the biggest fan of being soaked to the core, but I really wanted to give a good assessment of why I call this the niche beast. For a shot like this, you could use something like an A6300 or A6500 and just frame it and then you're gonna be looking at the lens and not at the screen anyway when you're filming this sort of a thing. So it's not really that big of a deal not having a flip out screen or maybe a Panasonic G7 or G85 that don't have the best autofocus and you can just set your focus distance. Really to me this camera is a very niche related camera that is for video. It's small, it's compact, it's easy to travel around with. You have a pretty large sensor, the image looks great, and actually the bit rate for the 1080p 60 frames a second is double what the Panasonic G7 has. So you're getting double the data rate into the EOS M50, producing a nicer quality 60 frames a second for 1080p slow motion. This camera is easy to use, it's easy to learn. You can pick up this camera and within a matter of hours, you can know pretty much everything there is. There's no deep menus, there's not a lot of menu items that you don't need for the, the niche type of video. This camera is not really made for you to be using it as a 4K shooter. This camera is more for people like me who don't want to invest a lot of money in storage for 4K because the 4K from this camera at 24 frames a second is four times the size of files as the 1080p at 24 frames a second. So you're dealing with a lot more. And then with people like me, my computer can't even play back 4K and the editing program that I use cannot even edit 4K. For most people, that's probably not a big deal and probably the next computer I get will be able to chew up and spit out 4K just fine. But for right now, I can't really be using the 4K. And really, the 1080p image looks great. I mean, this footage right here, the reason it looks good is not because it's shot in 1080p or shot in 4K or shot in 720p. The reason this footage looks good is because I have a good soft key light, I have a nice background light, and overall I put my time into lighting this video and doing the audio this microphone is inches away from my mouth. This camera's just enjoyable to use. You can pick it up throw it on a gorilla pod and go out and film an awesome vlog without having to worry about am I going to be in focus or did the exposure change from when I put my hand out in front of me to check it. And it's little things like that that really where this camera fits in. It's not going to be great for everything. I would not advise getting this camera for a production company. It's not going to serve you well. And that niche is vloggers or dads like me. I have four small children and I would rather not be worrying about manual focus all the time. I don't want to pull out something like a 1DX Mark II to take a picture or a short 30 second video of one of my children. Now one downside that you will hear a lot about this camera, and I really understand that, is the lack of a lens selection. For me that's not really a big deal because of the niche of video that I'm doing. The lenses that they provide for the ESM platform 
are about the lenses that I would want to get. Something like a 24 to 70 equivalent like I'm shooting on now, or maybe a 35 millimeter equivalent like the 22 millimeter lens, or an ultra wide like the 11 to 22. So that's a downside for anyone out of the niche, and that's kind of what I want to make clear, that I am calling this the niche beast, because it is an excellent camera if you get it for very narrow applications, but you're going to be disappointed if you try and branch out to much more. I don't need a red weapon or even an A6500 for the 4K or a Panasonic G85 for the 4K. I need something that I can just grab out, turn on, set my exposure, and film. So if that's what you're looking for, something to replace your M3 or your M5, or you have a bigger Canon DSLR, and you just want something a bit smaller, or really any camera, but you just want something small and compact that will get the job done, no problem, that has the flip out screen, a mic jack, you can take pictures, you can take some video in bright daylight with the EVF, then this camera is the camera for you. But if you're trying to get anything for video production outside of this little niche, then I would probably look at maybe Sony or Panasonic or wait till Canon releases a new camera because we have no idea, again, what that's going to be like. Comment down below and tell me what you think of this camera and suggest other cameras to people who maybe aren't in this niche and are looking for a really good camera to start out with. Please consider subscribing to the channel, be sure to hit the like button, and I'll see you in the next video.